I'm Dennis, I'm the technology evangelist here at Acetech and uh, today we're going to show you a bit about how we developed the Acetech RAD card. First of all, Alienware came to us with a problem of having a very small chassis with very limited airflow um, and also a lot of preheat in the system. Um, at the same time, they wanted better GPU performance both acoustically and thermally, which would lead to better performance hopefully. And to tell you more about that, let's go and see our engineers. My name is Anders, and uh, during a brainstorming session here at Aztec, I came up with the idea of a, of a multi-pass uh, heat exchanger for the PCIe card. My name is Lars, and I'm a mechanical engineer, and I uh, was helping Anders to build this. Actually, it was uh, like handed over in the summer vacations. Uh, can you look at this one? We're like stuck in the corner. The issue, can we place a pump upside down? Or do we need to flip it? Yeah, the general perception is that you can really make uh, a PCIe HX uh, capable of cooling uh, one of the high-end graphics cards. Normally, we'll bar have it below because because of the air, so it will not be stuck in the, the pump. So our concern was like, when you flip it, will it be uh, trapped in, inside of the pump? So just to get started and to uh, validate the, the concept, flip it around put it in a climate chamber and you're just running and running and uh, no issues. So then we started to follow this idea. The typical challenge with a PCIe hex would be that you have a very long air path and therefore you have a, lo a lot of uh, air heating. So when you split it up into several passes, you would see that the hottest liquid meets the hottest air because the air is heated up through the heat exchanger, And the coldest liquid where, where the outlet is meets the coldest air from the fan. So that's one of the reasons why this one has better performance than a traditional heat exchanger in a PCIe HX setup. One of the prototypes is, is a four pass heat exchanger. And then this prototype is a six pass heat exchanger. So they have different thermal behavior. One of them being better at, at, at low acoustics and the, the other one being better at high acoustics where a lot more performance is needed. This was designed to be in a, in a small enclosure where there's a lot of resistance for the air to go through. And that's also the reason why we have this centrifugal blower. So when you put this into a confined space, it will still maintain the performance. If you do an open bench, benchmark test of these two systems, you would see that this one has a, a relatively small performance drop when you put it into a confined space or a small form factor chassis as compared to this one, but the performance drop will be significantly higher than with the PCIe hex because of that, you know, air, air restriction. It should be similar to a graphic card. So we have like, all, always we have this limited, limit say, space. So if it's, for instance, this is an early prototype, yeah, with the tape and uh, like you have a fan cage here for the blower and with to narrow it down, we need to uh, embed the, the fan, the volume from the, the fan, so we can like drop it in here. Actually, we start with this some uh, 3D printed, uh, yeah, bad quality you can see, but it was like to to, uh, to find out the concept. You can also see this one is uh, it's racing. It's a better 3D printed <laughs> part, but still will with duct tape and so on, just to get some quick iteration. Uh, Sometimes you, you would need to challenge some of the standards. For example, this, this bracket here needs to be as open as possible to get as much air through the heat exchanger as possible. So I know that Lars <laughs> did a lot of challenging uh, the, the standard, the UL standard to, to sort of maximize the, the free area here. And then Lars challenged, <laughs> that challenged the guys uh, on the other end to, to open it more. That was also key to performance. We have a very long air path, so you would you would see that the air heats up as it passes across these uh, this heat exchanger. So the idea is here to to run the liquid in the opposite direction of the air. So the hottest liquid meets the hottest air. It has been heated up through the heat exchanger, and the coldest uh, liquid where where the outlet is meets the coldest air. So that was really really the difference between just having one one big heat exchanger. Inside, the connector is placed at the bottom, so we, all the air will be trapped on top of the X, and it's designed so 
it will contain uh, the, the air. When it's running, some of the air will go up here, but then it gets pumped out again, and then we would like it to be contained in the heat exchanger. And that's what Lars was talking about. Then we, we made room for the air that inevitably will be in the loop at some point in time. It will be contained in, in the heat exchanger. We put a little bit of air into it, so that will act as, as a spring. So the, the resulting pressure is less than if we just put in 100% uh, of liquid because the liquid is incompressible, then the, the pressure buildup will be enormous. Yeah, three months. Yeah, I think yeah. three months and it was just, you know, a concept. Yeah, it's always fun to, <laughs> to build some new, new <laughs> stuff, so. We'd love to hear your thoughts on the rat car, and we'd actually love to hear what other technologies you think would be amazing for us here at Ace Tech to develop as well. Not only that, but we, I want to encourage you to join our Discord channel. You'll find the link in the description below. Join us and let's talk about all the amazing tech and uh, not least water cooling. So uh, come join us.